Chapter 301, Titan Giant, Eighth Martial Soul. All right. Do you have a blacksmith's badge? I'll begin your registration. In case you're not aware, Shrek Blacksmith's Association goes by rules similar to those governing other blacksmith's associations across the continent. The clerk glanced at the badge in Tang Wuling's hand as he continued his explanation. The greater the blacksmith, the greater their authority. It was an orange badge with four yellow stars on it. See this badge's color scheme. He's a fourth rank blacksmith. Although fourth rank blacksmiths weren't too hard to find at Shrek Academy, he hadn't encountered one this young before. The average age of Shrek Blacksmith's Association members trended higher than those of other campus associations. After all, blacksmithing required a long accumulation of experience and a lengthy sharpening of skill. When Tang Wuling had first stepped foot into the room, the clerk was intrigued. When the fourth rank badge came into the picture, he was astounded. Is that real? Trembling hands took hold of the badge, slipping it into a tiny slot on the identification device. A detailed record of the owner's personal information would be swiftly retrieved. Regardless of their profession, Tang Waling, male, born in Glorybound City, member of East Sea Blacksmiths Association, F fourth rank blacksmith, second place winner of the Junior Division Blacksmithing Tournament, Sky Sea Alliance Tournament, total number of completed forging missions. His voice dipped lower and lower as Tang Waling's picture flashed on the screen, confirming his identity. The clerk didn't doubt who he was. It was impossible to fabricate the information on the badge. Not to mention, counterfeits were so easy to expose that it wasn't worth the time making them. Meanwhile, Yuanan was frozen by Tang Waling's side. He's a fourth rank blacksmith. He guessed Tang Waling was talented, judging by how Feng Wu had personally recruited him, but never had he imagined the youth sported such a high rank. Fourth rank professionals were rare in the fourth grade, not to mention the first grade. People of such caliber only became common in the fifth and sixth grades. I found the treasure. Since he's a fourth rank blacksmith, he has to be capable of second grade thousand refining at the very least. Here's your badge back. The young man said, his tone clearly more polite than before. As a fellow blacksmith, he understood better than Yuan and the unprecedented genius a 13 year old fourth rank blacksmith represented. How much it shook the foundations of blacksmithing history. Perhaps the academy bent the rules and made an exception in order to recruit him for his rich talent. You're a working student? The young man asked. Tang Wuling nodded. The clerk held his stare and something flashed within his eyes. Something close to understanding. I'll explain how the pay works here. Since the badge you got says you're a fourth rank blacksmith, you'll receive 2,000 points a month and access to a private 20 square meter workshop that's suitable for your rank and will be upgraded as your rank advances. Also, the association will provide you with 10 chunks of metal each month to use as you wish and an 8% discount when purchasing additional metal from the association. You can also get a job with the association if you want the association to sell products on your behalf. Then you've got to relinquish 5% as a fee. Obviously, the rest will go to you. In exchange for all these benefits, you must complete three jobs each month. Of course, the three jobs will be suitable for your rank. Last but not least, if you run into any problems, please don't hesitate to come by the association for assistance. There are so many benefits for joining. Throughout his path to becoming a blacksmith, Tang Wuling had stumbled upon many an impenetrable mountain along the way. And only now had he tasted the sweet fruits born of his labor. No matter where, blacksmiths would always be in high demand. As evident by the benefits offered by Shrek Blacksmiths Association, I'd like to accept some jobs. Please assign me a workshop. These were his two items of priority today. A personal workshop would allow him to practice forging and complete jobs, raking up contribution points on the way. A Tang sect branch was likely hidden in the belly of Shrek Academy. Tang Wuling would have to ask Gui Zhang where it was. And once he had the information, he'd go and report in, settling into a hectic schedule packed full of missions for both Shrek Academy and the Tang sect. He would consolidate his fifth rank foundation while completing forging jobs for the next year, taking a slow and steady approach to spirit refining. Please wait a moment. A while later, the clerk led Tang Wuling down a long and narrow corridor, winding and tortuous like a coiling snake. There was lining both sides. Upon closer inspection, Tang Wuling realized the how similar to a tube the hole was. With every step, the clerk babbled on, reminding him of certain important details. For example, that every association had their own space, and all of the rooms on either side of the corridor were for blacksmiths of the fourth rank and up. Every workshop was soundproofed, so no matter how furiously one swung the hammer, not a peep would leave the rooms. Tang Waling's workshop number was easy to remember. 88. Here's your workshop door card. It's free to use. If you need to buy metal or want to accept some jobs, hop by the front desk and we'll assist you immediately. Okay. I'll trouble you when the time comes. Tang Wuling entered his workshop with Yuan in tow. It was neat and tidy, empty shelves on either sides, not a dust mode in place. Right smack in the center of the room stood a forging table. One glance, and Tang Wuling knew it was the standard type. The type that, although not as fancy as Feng Wu's, was what he was most familiar with. The room was bare otherwise. Each wall was forged from metal. If he didn't know any better, he could have sworn he'd stepped foot into a world of metal. Even though it's not very large, it's still good. I can consider this workshop mine from now on. Earlier, Tang Wuling had taken his monthly allotment, ten chunks of metal. Fourth rank blacksmiths were treated well, although, although none of the ten metals were particularly valuable or rare, they were all free. No way could he turn that down. He arranged his newly acquired metals with some of the less valuable ones from his storage ring on the hungry shelves. And with that, the workshop no longer seemed so bare. Take your pick. Tang Waling pointed to the shelves. Yuanan returned his gesture with a blank stare. I'm not sure what I want. I need a full set of armor, so I'll just go with whatever you recommend. Tang Waling's eyes were peppered with surprise. You want to create a full set? You're already preparing to become a battle armor master. Yuanan nodded. I think that'll be difficult since your body grows too big when you use your martial soul. Tang Waling smiled in spite of himself. Oh right, what's your martial soul? It's so powerful. It'd make things easier if I knew. It's the Titan Giant Ape. Yuanan replied after hesitating for a moment. Titan Giant Ape? Tang Waling's eyes popped. Of course he had heard of it before. The Titan Giant Ape was known as the King of the Forest, royalty among soul beasts. But this was the first time he met someone with it as their martial soul. So what do you think? Yuanan asked. Tang Waling pondered for a moment. He is wearing an overdrive in his mind. Spirit refined metal would be best for you. That'll allow you to merge your armor with your body and accommodate you no matter how large your transformation. In today's lesson, my class's teacher said battle armor is meant for the martial soul to wear. So, one word battle armor can't really be counted as true battle armor. In any case, I'm too unfamiliar with how battle armor is made and don't know if one word battle armor can transform along with your martial soul. It can, Yuanan said, but the crafting process is very complicated. All right, how about you just thousand refine a highly ductile metal for me? Again, Tang Waling delved deep into his thoughts. Then you'll want the same metal as my hammers. Heavy silver. It's extremely ductile and is considered one of the best mid-grade metals. As for making the armor, you'll have to find a mega designer and maker. All right. Thousand refining heavy silver was a walk in the park for Tang Wuling. As Yuanan was his first customer since coming to Shrek Academy, Tang Wuling allowed him to stay and watch. Several strikes of the hammer later, a silver light shot out from the middle, leaving Yuanan gasping for his words. Why you're too fast? You're getting quite the deal this time. It's thousand refined with spirit, so it's first grade thousand refined. Don't you think one thousand contribution points is too cheap for something like this? Yuanan carefully accepted the heavy silver and put it away, nodding. It's cheap. I'll tell you a secret about Shrek Academy if you'll agree to continue forging for me at that price. Done. Tang Waling agreed to the bargain immediately, heart thumping and beat with a palpable anticipation in the room. I'm going to want you to answer a few more questions about working students also. Throw in those answers and I promise to continue forging thousand refined products for you at that price. This deal is only for you though. Chapter 302, Genius Working
It's a good thing I didn't find out too late. So I want to ask you, is there some secret about working students? Why do people act strange when they find out I'm a working student? That's because working students are freaks. You aren't an answered bluntly. The academy usually accepts any person who doesn't pass the exam but performs spectacularly in one area as a working student. Well, those with extraordinary qualities are admitted as working students too. For example, that elephant you met earlier used to be a working student, relying on his blacksmithing talent. He graduated from the outer court at the age of 34, but in that same year, he succeeded at soul refining and broke into the seventh rank, becoming a saint blacksmith. The academy made an exception for him, the youngest saint blacksmith on the continent, and accepted him into the inner court. Then his cultivation soared. He rose from six to nine rings in 20 years. He became a title duo and an eighth rank saint blacksmith. He's the greatest blacksmith of Shrek Academy and holds an exalted position. Working students created a precedent of reaching to the top. In the eyes of ordinary students, working students are unpredictable and absolutely must not be offended. The chances for graduating working students to enter the inner court is 30%, much higher than ordinary students. Naturally, we're under a lot more pressure than them too. The academy established a working student system for those who excelled in one particular field, but didn't meet the criteria for admittance. But now, after many generations of working students, these two words alone are enough to demand respect from ordinary students in the outer court. Tang Walin finally understood why the administrator had told him not to bring shame to the working students that day. So then, Elder Kai wasn't punishing us by making us working students. Do you have any other questions? Yuan and asked. Tang Walin said, I still have a question. You're so strong. So why haven't you entered the inner court yet? How old are you? I'm 15 years old. I entered Shrek Academy when I was 12. As for why I haven't entered the inner court yet, I can't tell you. It's a secret. A trace of loneliness flickered in Yuanan's eyes. All right, if you don't need anything else, I'm leaving now. I still need to finish my own tasks. Oh right, I'm a third rank maker designer. If you need any designs in the future, come find me and I'll give you a discount. Tang Walin smiled. Not for free. Yuanan stared at him. Free. Shrek Academy advocates a system where the more work you put in, the more you benefit. In order to gain something, you have to pay the price. Fine, fine. Stop being so serious. Let's go. We're going the same way, so I'll leave with you. Tang Walin had gained much disouting. Joining the Blacksmiths Association would make his life much easier. That is, providing him with a means to feed himself. You got what you wanted, so don't forget to treat me to dinner. You're such a glutton. Yuanan gave him a helpless look. They left the school building and walked back to their dormitory. Just as they exited the forest, however, Yuanan raised his head and stared into the distance. Tang Walin noted Yuanan's sudden stillness. He also looked in the same direction. A person sat on the edge of the forest. His body turned to face the dormitory. The man wore the green uniform of Shrek Academy. His golden hair neatly combed back. Tang Walin thought he looked a bit familiar. Yuanan stopped walking. At the same time, the golden-haired man also noticed them and turned his head. Tang Walin instantly recognized him. Isn't he the rich kid from yesterday who bought out the drink shop because he wanted a girl's number? He also had the angel martial soul, right? Seeing Tang Walin and Yuanan, the man stood up and strode over. Have you two seen a red-haired girl here? Actually, does a red-haired girl live here at all? The man stared at them arrogantly, his mere presence stifling to others. He's still looking for that fallen angel girl? Tang Walin's heart thumped. That's right. Didn't she say she was a working student as well? He subconsciously turned toward Yuanan. As a second grade student, Yuanan knew more about working students. Besides, this Yue Tang man was also a second grade student. The fact that he didn't recognize Yuanan was puzzling. Yuanan looked at Yue Tang with indifference. I don't know anyone like that. Please move out of the way. Not waiting for his reply, Yuanan began walking forward. Yue Tang eyes flashed. I've already waited half a day, but I've only met you two working students. Now, you say you don't know anything? He raised a hand to push Yuanan in the chest. Yuanan's expression instantly darkened, and imposing aura burst forth from his body, and he rammed Yue Tang with his shoulder. Astonishment flickered in Yue Tang's eyes. He hadn't been in Shrek Academy for long despite being an outer court student. If not for his clan's requirements, he would have entered the inner court long ago. He had been forced by his clan to go into seclusion to awaken his martial soul immediately after being admitted. So he started straight in the second grade upon completion. This was why he didn't recognize Yuanan. Facing Yuanan's attack, he also lowered his shoulder to ram into Yuanan's. Tang Walin retreated two steps. He didn't want to become collateral damage. As Tang Walin expected, the aftermath of their collision resulted in Yue Tang being sent flying. A burst of radiance later, wings unfurled behind Yue Tang's back, and he fought to steady himself in the air. Finally, his body righted itself. Yet tremors still ran down his right shoulder. Though the holy angel martial soul was formidable, it strength did not lie in power. When facing the tyrannical might of the Titan Great Ape, a soul beast whose mere punch could cause shockwaves, even Tang Wuling wasn't confident in his strength. It would take all of his bloodline power for Tang Wuling to contend against Yuanan. If Yue Tang Yu were fine after receiving such an attack, it would be strange. You. Fury blazed in Yue Tang Yu's eyes. Chapter 303. New Chen resigns. The look Yuanan shot Yue Tang Yu was cold enough to freeze. This area is for working students only. Please leave. Are you aware of the consequences for private battles on campus? Yue Tang Yu snorted, eyes flashing with irritation. Private battles are not permitted on the academy's premises. But swapping pointers, that's a different story. It's pretty much encouraged. In fact, come join me and aspire if you think you've got what it takes. Not interested. Without sparing him another glance, Yuanan left for the dormitory, footsteps trailing behind him. You. Yue Tang Yu cut himself short before he boiled over. Somehow, he had the sense of mind to understand his place. It wouldn't do for him to erupt here. Chest heating. He huffed. You're hiding an evil soul master. It wouldn't be in your best interests to cover for her. Yuanan stopped mid-step, turning his neck and fixing him with a heated glare. Evil soul master? The academy has judged there to be nothing of the sort here. So who are you to say there are? Yue Tang Yu returned his stare. Intense. I saw it with my own eyes. Then think of a way to prove it. Yuanan said dismissively. Let me remind you that only working students can enter the working student dormitory. If you set foot in our territory, by the academy's rules, we have the right to deal with you as we see fit. You'll be disciplined harshly as well. There are rules in place for the working student dormitory. Tang Walin's eyes popped. Being a working student seemed more attractive than ever. You. What's so amazing about working students? Yue Tang Yu scoffed in disdain. I invite you to try something then. Can I take your words as a declaration of war against all working students? Word after word of Yuan and stabbed into Yue Tang Yu like daggers. Yue Tang Yu's determined expression wavered. He had some understanding of working students. For one, they were basically a group of geniuses. Disregarding the current batch, working students of previous generations had stepped foot within the inner court, cultivating much power and influence, rising up to become inner court elites. Of course, I have a way to prove it. Yue Tang Yu narrowed his eyes so tight they resembled slits. A crafty smile crawled its way across his lips in the meanwhile. With a soft thud, his feet touched the ground, and he flicked one last glance at Yuan before leaving. At the side of the other man's departure, Tang Walin approached Yuan side. Do we really not have a red-haired student here? Yuan and furrowed his brows. Why are you asking to? Following this question, Tang Walin recounted what he had witnessed at the drink shop back then. At the end of his story, a crack appeared in Yuan's calm mask, though he shook his head. I'm absolutely certain there isn't anyone like that here. Anyway, I'm going to return first. Watching him leave, Tang Walin had the sinking suspicion Yuan was brushing this matter under the rug. A normal person wouldn't have caught on, but the advancement in his bloodline amplified his perception. There was something off about Yuan. Back in his room, Tang Walin was surprised to find his teammates nowhere in sight. He hadn't a clue where they went,
Were you just ranked 26 or 27 before you left? How could you break through so quickly? Did you eat some heavenly treasure? Niu Chen asked, shock pig in his voice. That's not what I meant. I made a breakthrough in forging. I tried spirit refining and succeeded. The line went silent. Teacher, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Explain to me what happened. Niu Chen's lack of reaction left Tang Wolin flabbergasted. Isn't becoming a fifth rank blacksmith at 13 something surprising? On the day of the exam, Tang Wolin proceeded to recite the events, not sparing a single detail. He even explained how he had felt during the process, the sensations that cascaded through his body, in hopes that Niu Chen would help analyze the entire situation and shed light on his current level. Good preparation is the key to success. Niu Chen said, after listening to Tang Wolin's recount, but that was far too dangerous. You absolutely must not attempt spirit refining again before you reach rank 30. I'll come visit you in a few days and we can continue our conversation then. Yes, teacher, you're coming to Shrek. Tang Wolin asked, astonished. MHM. I've been here too long now. It's about time for a change in scenery and Shrek is a pretty nice place. In any case, congratulations. Although you've only succeeded spirit refining once, you're still a fifth rank blacksmith now, and you've accomplished this at the tender age of 13. You're an outstanding genius no matter the profession. Thank you, teacher. Tang Wolin grinned. Tang Wolin then recounted in vivid detail his experience right after his classes began and his encounter with Feng Wuyu. Through it all, Niu Chen listened in silence, withholding his opinions. Over in East City, Niu Chen wore an expression that was anything but calm. After the call with Tang Wolin ended, he quickly dialed another number. I want two train tickets to Shrek City, scheduled for three days from now. I can't sit here twiddling my thumbs anymore. If I don't go, my disciple might get snatched away. No matter what, I can't let him steal my treasure disciple. Following this thought, Niu Chen made another call. Hello, I'm Niu Chen. Please connect me to the president. Oh, He's holding a meeting right now. Okay. Tell him that I'm resigning. Tang Wolin sat there at a loss. He didn't know how much of a shock he had given Yu Chen nor where his teammates were. He chose to remain in the room. After joining Shrek Blacksmith's Association, he secured a steady source of contribution points. He gained a deep insight regarding the background of working students too. Now standing at the top of his list was self-improvement. His goal set at reaching rank 30. He spent an entire afternoon meditating. The mysterious heaven method was slow to cultivate, but it emphasized creating a firm foundation. Tang Wolin met with Yuanan for his free dinner, engaging in his alternative cultivation method once more. For the sake of not drawing too much attention, he found a table in the corner and dragged his friends to eat with him, introducing them to Yuanan at the same time. Senior Yuanan, how many working students are there right now? Shi Shi's eyes sparkled after hearing the legend of the working students, and couldn't help himself from asking this question. Yuanan turned to him. There were six of us last year. Two graduated, two entered the inner court, and one withdrew from the academy. So I'm the only one left of the previous batch. Counting you guys, there are five of us now. You're the only one left? Tang Wolin stared at Yuanan in confusion, but I clearly remember seeing a working student's badge on that girl. Even the enforcer recognized it. If Yuanan's telling the truth, then who is that girl? Huh? Then those rooms that looked lifted should be empty now. Before he could finish his thoughts, someone came over to their table. Who are you trying to trick? Saying you're the only working student left in your year. What about that red-haired girl? Yuanan glowered toward Yue's Hang Yu. You're really a leech that never lets go. Yue's Hang Yu made a dignified face. To eradicate evil is the duty of every holy angel soul master. This is merely my responsibility. Stop hiding her from me. Otherwise you'll face the consequences of doing so once I catch her. You're not welcome here. Yuanan said coldly. A smile formed on Yue's Hang Yu's lips. He pulled a chair from another table over and sat down. Why aren't I welcome? Don't you working students have to pay for your food? I'll treat you all this time. No, thank you, Tang Wolin said. Yue's Hang Yu flicked a leisurely glance at him. You sure do have a lot of backbone. Chapter 304, Yue's Hang Yu. This has nothing to do with having a backbone, Tang Wolin said. Today's meal has already been paid for. Yue's Hang Yu was taken aback by this fact. Tomorrow then, Hu Yue made a grim expression, eyes narrowed and face pinched. We won't accept food from someone as dishonest as you. At the sound of her words, Yue Sheng Yu's smile widened. Then what if I were an honest person? It embarrasses me to say this, but please take care of me in the future. I went to the administration earlier and had my working student application approved. Yuanan's brows arched when he heard this, his eyes instantly locking onto Yue Sheng Yu. With a smirk, Yue Sheng Yu met Yuanan's glare head on, not at all phased. This guy actually became a working student. Dread creaked into Tang Wolin's heart as he imagined their future as working students. I'm done eating. Yuanan stood up with his food tray and left, not sparing the group another glance. At his departure, Yue Sheng Yu beamed as if he were proud of an accomplishment. Now I can enter the dormitory for working students too. If that girl is there, I'll definitely find her. You. You're such a senseless person. She she said, nostrils flaring in irritation. How am I senseless? Yu Hang Yu demanded. How could you be anything but senseless to go to such lengths to find one person? Especially since the enforcer already said she isn't an evil soul master. Even if you find her, what do you think is going to happen? She she stared at Yu Hang Yu with eyes of ridicule. How could a fallen angel soul master not be an evil soul master? Yu Hang Yu fired back, unconvinced. I'll definitely dig up proof that she is. And by that time, she won't have any way to cover it up. Just you wait and see. After speaking, Yu Hang Yu also stood up to leave. But Tang Wolin raised a hand to stop him. Wait a minute, Tang Wolin said. What do you want? Tang Wolin smiled. Remember when you bought that drink shop? Well, we were there too and witnessed everything. I have some questions I want to ask you. You guys were there. Oh. I think I remember you now. You were sitting at the table next to me, right? So what do you guys think? Didn't that girl seem like an evil soul master? We're unrelated to that matter. Tang Wolin cut him off. What I wanted to ask you is this. Since you're so rich, does that mean you have a lot of contribution points too? Yu Hang Yu straightened his back with pride. How could my holy angel plan be lacking in contribution points? In fact, we have a lot of businesses on campus. We have no shortage of points. I'm flinching. Tang Wolin said. Then do you need any metals forged? I'm a blacksmith, and I'm sure you know how porous working students are. You're a blacksmith. What can you forge? A hint of disdain crept into Yue Sheng Yu's voice. Tang Wolin paid it no mind, a smile sliding across his mouth. See for yourself. He revealed his fourth rank blacksmith's badge, waiting for Yue Sheng Yu to examine it. As a member of the Holy Angel Clan, it was natural for Yue Sheng Yu to recognize the badge for what it was. He was instantly struck stupid. Why are a fourth rank blacksmith? Yeah. Tang Wolin nodded. He didn't dare proclaim himself a fifth rank blacksmith before attaining his fifth rank badge. How old are you? Yue Sheng Yu felt shivers coursing down his spin, hair springing. Thirteen. What? Working students really are monstrous. Are you all new students? That's right. What about you? How old are you? Tang Wolin asked. I'm 15 and a second grade student. Yue Hang Yu answered. But I had to spend all of my first grade in seclusion with my clan, so I haven't attended classes until now. Puzzle pieces began falling into place in Tang Wolin's mind, so that's why he didn't recognize Yuan and even though they're in the same grade. I'll come find you when I need things forged in the future. Yue Hang Yu shot out of his chair like a rocket, a giant grin plastered on his face. But you're still just at the fourth rank, so keep on working hard. Blacksmiths are only truly amazing once they reach the fifth rank. As Yue Hang Yu finally departed, she she watched his shrinking back with discontent eyes. Boss, that guy is way too arrogant. Why are you trying to get closer to him? Tang Wolin responded with a wry smile. Since he's a working student now, we're standing on even ground with him. Besides,
Your playfulness for now, in fact, you should all join the associations of your respective professions and begin climbing to the next rank with their support. Both Xu Xiaowen and Gu Yue were maker designers, and Xu Xu was a maker maker. Of the three, Gu Yue had advanced the furthest, already at the second rank. The other two were still stuck at the bottom, so there was actually a silver lining to them missing the fifth trial during the entrance exam. Xu Xu deflated like a balloon. All right then. Let's go join an association first. He understood just as well as Tang Wuling did that time waited for no one. Taking in Shishu's look of resignation, Tang Wuling sighed in his heart. He knew without a doubt their hardships at Shrek Academy had just begun. From then on, Tang Wuling cultivated, went to eat dinner, and immediately returned to the dormitory, not letting a second go to waste. He was beginning to fall into a routine now. He attended classes in the morning, spent two hours forging in the afternoon, then utilized every spare second cultivating. He wasn't anxious to enter the spirit ascension platform since all of their spirit souls had been saturated with spirit energy. Soul power cultivation was his number one priority now. He needed to reach rank 30 as soon as possible and obtain his third soul ring. When that time arrived, he could attempt to spirit refine once more. A single success in spirit refining did not mean he had a complete grasp of the process. He still needed to practice and refine his skill. What set fifth rank and fourth rank blacksmiths apart with that fifth rank blacksmith only needed to present their identification to accept spirit refining jobs, and they bore no consequences in the event of failing to forge a medal. These were the advantages of being in the fifth rank, which made sense in light of spirit refining's enormous rate of failure. If blacksmiths had to guarantee the success of a spirit refining, no one would want to be one. This was why Yue's Hengyu had said blacksmiths only became formidable at the fifth rank. By then, one could accept commissions while using those requests to practice spirit refining. Back in Eastie City, Tang Wulin had saw that the minimum reward for spirit refining was ten times that of thousand refining. His eyes hadn't been playing tricks on him; it was actually ten times. Although Tang Wulin wasn't familiar with Shrek Academy's inner workings, he found it safe to assume the same rate existed here as in Eastie City. After all, spirit refined metal was the foundation of two-word battle armor. Tang Wulin was convinced that two-word battle armor masters were rare in the outer court. As such, the entire outer court should be his potential customers. In order to the next golden dragon king seal, not to mention purchase items to assist his cultivation. Tang Wuling would have to farm contribution points bit by bit. It was a cycle of working and cultivation that continually fed back into itself. The order of things was important. As long as Tang Wuling had a clear cut plan, he would know what to focus on in each stage as he progressed. Chapter 305 The Battle for Class President. Today we will be electing the class representatives. With Elder Kai absent as usual, Shen Yi took charge of the lectures while Wu Zhang Kong stood to the side in silence. He swept his icy daisy over the entire class. Here at Shrek, strength reigns supreme. We have already tested your characters, so we don't care who becomes a class representative. A class battle will be held, and the final victor will be the class president. Those who demonstrate exceptional talent will fill in the other positions. There are seven representatives in total one class president, two vice presidents, and a council made up of the four secondary professions. Don't look down on the position of class representative. Each representative will be in charge of different parts of the class and receive bonus contribution points. The president and vice presidents are the leaders and represent the whole class. Each month the class president will receive 1,000 contribution points. The vice president 600, and the members of the profession council will each receive 500 points. As long as a representative can become a battle armor master by 25 years of age, they will automatically be admitted into the inner court upon graduation. Also, they may take the graduation exam at any time they wish. Remember, you must graduate from the inner court by the time you turn 35. Don't even dare to proclaim yourself a member of Shrek otherwise. Anyway, these seven positions will be filled in today. First, I will declare Tang Wuling as the blacksmith representative. Tang Wuling did not expect this at all. Stand up. Let your classmates get acquainted with you, Shen Yi said. Tang Wuling stood up, turning around to face all of his classmates. Everyone's gazes landed on Tang Wuling, each with different reactions. The girls instantly brightened the moment they saw him. For one simple reason, he was handsome. Tang Wuling, at the young age of 13, stood 165 centimeters tall and was only a head shorter than an adult. Long eyelashes accentuated his large eyes. With a lean build and a radiant smile, his pretty boy look easily captured the hearts of the girls. The boys, however, did not look too kindly on him. Just by the fact that they attended Shrek Academy was enough to attest to their genius status, and so they all naturally regarded themselves highly. Teacher, a student in the back row raised his hand. Speak, Shen Yi said. Why doesn't he need to compete for the blacksmith representative position? The young man stood up, revealing his unbelievably muscular build. He stood over 190 centimeters tall and had a deep voice. Oddly enough, though, his eyes were extremely small, so small that they were like slits. Yang Nyangsha, you're not exactly wrong. Tang Wuling doesn't need to compete for the blacksmith representative position because no one can compete with him. He's a fourth-rank blacksmith. Shen Yi's words roused the entire class. Fourth-rank blacksmith. A fourth-rank blacksmith who's not even 15 years old. That's just ridiculous. Yang Nyangsha froze, stunned. Originally, he had objected because he himself was a third-rank blacksmith, a remarkable achievement for his age. Now, however, words failed him. He couldn't hope to compare to a fourth-rank blacksmith. He stared at Tang Wuling in shock, though he could not accept it just yet. He sat back down. Tang Wuling gave Yang Nyangsha a nod. His expression unchanging. Any other questions? Shen Yu swept her gaze across the class. Little did the class know, Shen Yu was still understating Tang Wuling's level. After all, he had yet to receive his badge for the fifth rank and couldn't spirit refine at the moment. Everyone changed their suspicious attitudes within an instant. Although Shrek Academy students constantly competed against each other, assisting each other was also possible. After all, it would be foolish not to form close ties with talented people. Everyone was painfully aware that they could not become battle armor masters through their own efforts alone. They would need outside help, and their classmates were their best bet. These students, having come from all over the continent, had all heard numerous tales of Shrek Academy that instilled caution into their hearts. Everyone knew that they had directed all their efforts into self improvement. In the end, they were all geniuses that made it into Shrek Academy. Seeing no one else object, Shen Yu smiled. Good, that's settled then. A competition will be held for the other positions. The contest for the president and vice president seat will start in a moment. We're going to practice field where you can fight to your heart's content. There's only one requirement to become the class president. Survive until the very end. The two runner-ups will be the vice presidents. Let me remind you, it's not a fight to the death. As long as your four limbs or your torso touches the ground, you will be eliminated. Of course, if you wish to withdraw from the position, that's fine too. There are many perks of being the class president, but the responsibilities are just as heavy. If there's one benefit that makes it worth it though, it would be the extra credit you receive when you take the inner entrance exam in the future, and the greater influence on campus. As I'm sure you all know, the highest authority in Shrek City and Shrek Academy is the Sea God's Pavilion. Nearly all the elders of the Sea God's Pavilion were past class presidents or vice presidents. The Academy has six grades and only six classes, so there are only six class presidents in total. Every one of them has a higher chance of making it into the inner court. How can she say withdrawing is fine? Now she's just trying to provoke us. Still standing up. Tang Wuling clearly saw Shen Yu's words ignite a fire in the eyes of his fellow classmates, and he was no exception. There wasn't anyone who didn't want to stand above their peers. This was especially true at Shrek Academy. But in order to climb to the top, they had to fight. All right, you have 15 minutes to prepare. Naturally, you can also form groups. It's up to you. We will only observe the battles. 15 minutes to form teams. Tang Wuling's heart thumped. He understood the underlying meaning in Shen Yu's words. This wasn't merely a test of their individual strength. In order to become the class president, it would take more than a single person's power. The Shrek Academy entrance exam already weeded out every weakling. Right now,
The lecture theater scene grew rowdy as people turned towards the person sitting next to them in search of comrades, with only three positions available. The teams remained small. If the team was too big, there would be conflicts over who received the positions. Though strangers at first, the classmates soon became friendly. Can I join you guys? I'm a control type soul master, so I'll definitely be useful. I don't want to be class president. I'm just afraid of getting hurt. If you'll have me, I'll withdraw when we're the only team left. Chapter 306, Forming Groups. Xu Xiaolan had a delicate appearance, like that of a frail flower. She was undoubtedly unrivaled among her peers. It didn't take much for a relatively large team to accept her, making them a team of five with her addition. Ignoring her team's discussions, she glanced at Tang Walin, completely pleased with herself. She, she also managed to join a team without a hitch. Agility type soul masters excelled in chaotic battlefields, so he was easily able to recruit two other agility type soul masters to form a team of three. He even came up with a name for his team, the Scavengers. Someone spoke up while Tang Walin was immersed in observing his fellow classmates. Hi, are you really a fourth rank blacksmith? It was that Yang Nyangsha who had previously doubted him. MN. I am. Tang Walin took out his badge as proof. Considering Yang Nangsha's sturdy build, Tang Walin was certain that he was a blacksmith as well. As fellow blacksmiths, they were bound to run into each other often in the future, so it was best to maintain a cordial relationship. Let's team up then. I'm a power type soul master. My martial soul is the Dusk Gold Bear, Yang Nyangsha said, cutting right to the chase. The Dusk Gold Bear? Tang Walin was startled. The Dusk Gold Bear was a variant of the Dusk Gold Dreadclaw Bear. In all of history, a soul master with the Dusk Gold Dreadclaw Bear as martial soul had never appeared. Maybe it was just too overbearing for a human to contain. The Dusk Gold Bear, however, was lauded as the most powerful bear type martial soul. It possessed all the traits of the Dusk Gold Dreadclaw Bear, except for its famed claw, both its strength and defense were tyrannical, making it an amazing neat shield. Tang Walin could be considered a sort of assault type soul master. If he were to team up with such an amazing human shield, his survivability would soar to new heights. Tang Walin nodded without the slightest hesitation. Sure. Welcome to the team. I'm Tang Walin, and this here is my companion, Du Yue. I'm a control type soul master, and Du Yue is an elemental type soul master that specializes in control, support, and ranged attacks. Hi. Yang Nyangsha offered his hand to Gu Yue in greeting. However, she only gave him a nod. She never let anyone apart from Tang Wulin touch her. Tang Wulin smiled sheepishly. That's just the kind of person Gu Yue is. Don't mind it too much, Yang Nyangsha. Yang Nyangsha chuckled and he rubbed the back of his head. It's fine, it's fine. Oh, right. How old are you? It's amazing that you're a fourth rank blacksmith at such a young age. We should compare notes sometime. Sure. I'm 13. How about you? I'm 14. The two stared at each other in astonishment. Yang Nyangsha surprised them from how young Tang Wulin was. While Tang Wulin found Yang Nyangsha's enormous size shocking for someone of his age, the three of us make quite a good team. Do you have any idea what we should do later? I'm not very good at strategizing. What are your specialties? Yang Nyangsha asked, full of vigor. All of the new students still weren't familiar with each other, so this battle royale served as the perfect stage to showcase their strengths. The more formidable one appeared, the easier it would be for them to form relationships with others. Furthermore, it would elevate one's status in the class. Everyone was eager to prove themselves. Tang Walin smiled wryly. It's quite simple, really. Isn't your martial soul the Dusk Gold Bear? The Dusk Gold Bear has amazing strength and defense. All you need to do is focus on displaying them, and we'll be fine. Leave the rest to me and Du Yue. I'll pull people to you, and you'll beat them up. Du Yue will be in charge of ranged attacks and supporting us. With the addition of Yang Nyangsha, Tang Walin was satisfied with the composition of their team. He had no doubts about Yang Nyangsha's strength. He had passed Trek's entrance exam too, after all. At the very least, he had to have three soul rings. Those who had been admitted with only two soul rings, like Tang Walin, were an oddity. As this thought crossed Tang Walin's mind, the image of that red-haired fallen angel girl popped into his head. Doesn't she only have two rings as well? And she has purple ones like mine. The same goes for Yue Tang Yu. He has three purple rings. It seems like both holy angels and fallen angels have the physical strength and spiritual power to support a powerful spirit soul. Fifteen minutes soon passed. Shen Yi and Wu Zhang Kong majestically led the 101 students of the first grade out of the classroom. They walked down a long hall, venturing into the depths of the school building. The school building was simply enormous. It would take someone several years to become familiar with every nook and cranny of it. They soon arrived in a large circular room. Strangely enough, this room is barely large enough to fit all of the students, but nowhere near enough room for them to do battle. In just a moment, all of you will enter illusory world. I believe everyone here has been in the spirit ascension platform before, so you can consider this world as something similar. Now, everyone move outside of the white circle on the floor, Shen Yi said. The students did as Shen Yi ordered and withdrew from the center of the room, leaving a large empty space there. Shen Yi walked over to the wall and operated some kind of mechanism. A series of soul circuits lit up in response, zigzagging all over the room. A moment later, the floor of the center of the room opened up, and egg shaped globes shot out. Each globe was about 2.5 meters tall with a diameter of 1.2 meters. All of them split open to reveal a peculiar cockpit within. You may choose to enter whichever one you want. After entering, you will find yourselves in a forest. The boundaries of this forest are small, so you will quickly encounter each other. If you want to be near any companions, enter eggs that are near each other. You have three minutes to sort things out. Don't forget to buckle your seat belts once you've entered your cabin. So high tech. Tang Walin stared at the oval cabins in admiration. They were clearly entering the same kind of world as the Spirit Ascension platform, taking the world they entered during the entrance exam into consideration as well. He could barely even begin to imagine what technology Shrek Academy possessed. Perhaps he would no longer need to visit the Spirit Ascension platform and could just come here instead. Tang Walin, Yu Yue, and Yang Nyangsha swiftly chose three cabins that were clustered together. After entering, they buckled their seatbelts, and the opening of their cabins closed, leaving each of them in darkness. Soon after that, specks of starlight twinkled into existence around Tang Walin, as if he were floating amidst a sea of stars. Waves of energy began rippling around him, and the air began to spin. Dizziness struck him and left him dazed. But just as he was about to throw up from the nausea, his mind went blank. His nausea completely vanished, and he could feel his feet planted firmly below him. He immediately dropped to the ground in a low crouch. Crouching reduced how big of a target he was, also gave the chance to let his soul power and blood essence settle. It was essential for him to be in peak condition. Tang Walin had a clear view of his surroundings. Just as Shen Yi had said, he found himself in a lush forest. He couldn't see anyone else, but the dense flora severely limited his line of sight. Now that he was in a forest, Tang Walin felt like a fish back in water. Plant type soul masters like him had a definite advantage in such an environment. Tang Walin dashed to the side and jumped into some shrubbery to hide himself. A moment later, purple eyes appeared within the shrubbery. Tang Walin! Gu Yue! Where are you guys? A voice roared nearby. Tang Walin was stunned, but his expression soon darkened. This guy! The owner of that voice was clearly Yang Nyangsha. Chapter 307, Dusk Gold Bear Martial Soul. Shen Yi had said that this small forest would be filled with the students of the first grade. Tang Walin was appalled that Yang Nyangsha would brazenly shout like this, revealing himself the instant the battle royale started. Tang Walin leaned forward as he stealthily dashed through the shadows of the bushes toward Yang Nyangsha's voice. He had to join up with Yang Nyangsha immediately and change their location before they were surrounded. Sure enough, he quickly located Yang Nyangsha by following his booming voice. Yang Nyangsha stood in the middle of a clearing, a perplexed look on his face as he swept his gaze through his surroundings. He was tall and muscular and practically
Although Tang Wulin was startled, he didn't rush out to save Yang Nyangsha. Their alliance wasn't that solid to begin with, and he had to be cautious of any enemies that appeared. Only the heavens knew how many people had set their sights on Yang Nyangsha now. The assailant braced themselves against Yang Nyangsha, taking advantage of their difference in height to push off of Yang Nyangsha's back to strangle him. This was an illusory world in which even death wasn't real, so the attacker showed no mercy and immediately aimed for a fatal blow. Yang Nyangsha's body instantly went stiff as he resisted the force pressing against his neck. The fact that his attacker aimed for a vital part like his neck from the very beginning meant that they were a fairly powerful agility type soul master. Three soul rings rose from under the attacker's feet, but only his second ring lit up. Yang Nyangsha jabbed his elbow backward, intent on striking the attacker's chest. However, since the attacker stood on his back, his elbow couldn't reach. Yang Nyangsha ferociously stomped the ground and his body began expanding. He quickly grew from 190 centimeters to 200. 50 centimeters tall. Although his transformation wasn't as drastic as Yuanan's titan giant ape, Yang Nyangsha's hair became dark gold, a dark gold luster covered his skin, and three purple soul rings rose from his feet. This guy, Tang Wulin's eyes widened in shock, seemingly sensing that his advantage was gone. The assailant kicked off of Yang Nyangsha and put some distance between them. At that moment, Yang Nyangsha's first soul ring lit up and dark gold and light erupted from his body. The light revealed the true form of the illusory figure behind him, slowing them down as well. Yang Nyangsha's hand shot backward to catch the enemy by their ankle. With a firm grasp on the enemy's ankle, he smashed them into the ground like a ragdoll. An instant later, the ambush's body disappeared in a flash of light. After confirming his victory, Yang Nyangsha returned to his normal appearance, minus the clothes that had been torn apart by his transformation. Tang Wulin, who are you, eh? Where are you two? Yang Nyangsha shouted, clearly having no intention of stopping. As he watched from the shadows, Tang Wulin felt a chill go down his spine. Just as expected, no one who passed the entrance exam can be considered weak. He might be exposing himself while looking for us, but he has the strength to do so. His powerful martial soul and strange soul skill allowed him to easily take care of that ambusher. That wire didn't even do anything to him. I shouldn't go out yet. He looks honest, but he has a cunning heart. He's an excellent teammate candidate. What are you hollering for? Three figures emerged from the forest, a group of two boys and one girl. All of them had two purple soul rings and one yellow soul ring. The girl led the way. She had a dazzlingly pretty face and was an even match for Xu Xiaolin in the looks department, but she was far more arrogant. A dark ring snake coil around her right arm, surrounded by a gloomy aura. The two boys behind her were average in terms of height and looks, but their faces were identical. The moment he saw the twins, Tang Wulin couldn't help but recall the twin sisters he had encountered at the Spicy Alliance tournament. He had lost to their powerful soul fusion skill back then. Considering the fact that these two boys were also twins, he wondered if they also had a soul fusion skill. Since classes had just started, Tang Wulin was still unfamiliar with his classmates. He didn't know who was powerful and who was weak. Judging by the sound of the voice, it was clear that the girl had spoken. Yang Nyangsha responded with an innocent smile. Hi, I'm Yang Nyangsha. I'm looking for my teammates right now. The girl stepped forward. I'm Zhang Yuren. You should just withdraw right now and save yourself from some pain. The position of class president is already mine. Yang Nyangsha stared at her in astonishment. Didn't the teacher say we need to fight for the position? How is the position already yours? Zhang Yuren frowned. Are you stupid? I obviously meant that no one else is worthy of being my opponent. It's guaranteed that I'll beat everyone here and become the class president. All right, enough of this nonsense. Zeng Long. Zeng Hu. Sent him on his way. Yes, young miss. The two boys behind her shot forward, their first soul rings twinkling as an aura of darkness enveloped them. A green tint appeared on their skin as they dashed toward Yang Nyangsha. They opened their mouths and shot green light straight at him. Yang Nyangsha stood there as if he had been stunned, not moving an inch. Then he suddenly released his martial soul and his body swelled once more. Isn't he being too cocky? Tang Wulin frowned from his position in the bushes. The two green lights struck Yang Nyangsha. He shuddered as a dark green hue corrupted the golden luster that covered him. Ah, uh, poison. Yang Nyangsha cried out as a sudden trembling gripped him. Zeng Long and Zeng Hu approached Yang Nyangsha with lightning speed. Their martial souls could only faintly be discerned as a jade green haze. Death clung to them, and the surrounding plants wilted wherever they went. It was poison, just as Yang Nyangsha said. It was a rarely seen poison attribute martial soul. Considering the fact that they had passed the Shrek entrance exam, they had to be powerful in their own right. That Zeng Yuren, who seemed to have a similar martial soul, was also there. They likely hailed from a family of poison attribute martial souls. Tang Wulin's horizons were truly broadened today. Since entering Shrek Academy, he had seen countless rare and powerful martial souls. In the blink of an eye, Zeng Long and Zeng Hu reached Yang Nyangsha. Yang Nyangsha trembled more intensely than before as each of the twins raised a foot to kick him. A transparent jade green spike sprouting from their feet. Although the spikes were beautiful, the association of the color with their martial souls took away from that. If the two spiked kicks struck Yang Nyangsha's neck, his bid for class presidency would definitely be done. Even so, Tang Wulin did not act. Yang Nyangsha wasn't really his comrade after all. Besides, considering how crafty Yang Nyangsha was, Tang Wulin was confident that he wouldn't lose to just two poison attributes all masters. So poisonous. How scary. Yang Nyangsha wailed, but just as the two spikes were about to stab him, he stopped trembling. His arms shot out like lightning to grab each twin by the ankle. A grim smile formed on his lips. Isn't that enough now? He stomped on the ground, dispelling the green haze on him with a burst of dark golden light. The light made the air tremble, and when it struck Zeng Long and Zeng Hu, their bodies went weak. They had been completely sapped to strength. Chapter 308, Jade Snake Zeng Yuren. Yang Nyangsha ruthlessly slammed the twins onto the ground. Zeng Long and Zeng Hu disappeared in two flashes of light before Zeng Yuren could even react. You. She stood there, stunned beyond belief. Never had she expected that the twins' poison would be ineffective against Yang Nyangsha. Hi Zeng Yuren, I'm Yang Nyangsha. Please advise me. Yang Nyangsha, without giving her a chance to process the situation, charged toward her like an unstoppable tank. You're seeking death. Zeng Yuren screamed. A bright green haze covered her as she dashed forward. The snake curled around her arm glowed, then spat green mist at Yang Nyangsha. Yang Nyangsha snarled. Dark gold light burst from his body, disintegrating the mist when they touched. He reached her an instant later. Zeng Yuren regarded him with icy eyes as she still rushed forth, clearly not intending to dodge. Yang Nyangsha was just about to smash into her, when her body went soft as if her bones had liquefied and her arm shot out to meet his fist. Light exploded around her, concealing which soul skill she used. A split second later, she wrapped herself around Yang Nyangsha, constricting him. She lifted up her now jade green right hand and stabbed it at his neck. At the same time, the snake on her arm glowed again and sprayed another puff of mist at Yang Nyangsha's face. Yang Nyangsha's third soul ring lit up, and he held his already enormous bulk into three meters in height. Dark gold first sprouted all over his body like a bed of steel needles. Light exploded from his body in an attempt to Zeng Yuren off of him. However, unlike Zeng Long and Zeng Hu, she held fast onto Yang Nyangsha like glue. Even as the light increased in intensity, she held on. The two were locked in a stalemate. At that moment, a palm appeared out of nowhere and gently rested on Zeng Yuren's back. She trembled, then stiffened as a layer of blue frost spread across her back. Yang Nyangsha roared as he tensed his muscles, shattering Zeng Yuren's frozen body into brilliant shards of ice. A second later, and all that remained of her was a few particles of light. A girl with long black hair flashed next to Yang Nyangsha's side. She wasn't particularly pretty, but she had a particular air about her. It was Gu
Yang Nai anxious said with a wrong expression. That's your problem. Yu Yue didn't look back. Instead, she crouched down and entered the bushes. She casually sat next to Tang Wuling. At that moment, Tang Wuling's eyes flashed and his right arm shot out like lightning. A ding rang through the air as a pair of sharp talons were knocked away by Tang Wuling's arm. They had been aimed at their backs. Spears of blue silver brass shot out from the ground and shook the surrounding bushes so violently. They released two people whose bodies were paralyzed. In the same instant, a pair of needle long wind blades flew out and turned the two attackers into flashes of light. Tang Wuling hadn't turned around the entire time. Even now, he only revealed the smirk as he gave a thumbs up behind him. A figure crawled forward not too far from behind Tang Wuling and picked up a strand of blue silver brass. Not a sound came from this person, as if he had completely blended in with the environment. It was precisely Shishi. The team he had formed with two other agility type soul masters had eliminated five other people beforehand. After all, agility type soul masters had both speed and attack power ambush was their forte. But when Shishi's two teammates had set their eyes on Tang Wuling, neither sensed their impending doom. It was a pity. They had been betrayed. After spending all these years together, Tang Wuling and Shishi didn't need to verbally communicate. As soon as Shishi realized that the person within the bushes was Tang Wuling, he pinched a strand of blue silver brass found everywhere because he knew of Tang Wuling's grass surveillance network. After being warned, Tang Wuling had passed this on to Yu Yue with a signal only their team knew. The tragic fates of the two agility type soul masters played out afterward. The most important part of this chain of events, though, was that they had never suspected Shishi's betrayal. Once restrained, only one path left for agility type soul masters. It wasn't that they went strong, but their advantage lay in ambushing and guerrilla tactics. With their speed, it naturally lowered the strength of their defenses. Yang Nai noticed this commotion and approached the bushes. His pupils contracting in shock when he saw two flashes of light. However, he soon regained his calm and gave a thumbs up. He ran over to join Yu Yue in the bushes. Why you? When did you get here? Yang Nai exclaimed, surprised to see Tang Wuling in the bushes as well. Tang Wuling gave a wry smile. I just got here a moment ago. A naive smile formed on Yang Nai lips. Oh, keep watch for me then. I need to recover some soul power. They had already eliminated six people within a few short minutes. Moreover, all of their opponents have been powerful, especially that Zheng Yuren with her tyrannical poisonous martial soul. Despite this, the Dusk Gold Bear's soul defenses restrained her martial soul, and she met her demise at the hands of Gu Yue's frost palm. Of course, victory wouldn't have been so easy for them had she not been so arrogant. Yang Nai sat down and began meditating without a hint of worry. He had complete faith in Tang Wuling and Gu Yue to protect him. Tang Wuling and Gu Yue exchanged a look. They didn't speak as Tang Wuling his silver brass into the ground to link with the surrounding plants. He poured soul power into the plants through his brass, empowering them to mask their aura. Chapter 309, Demon Scythe. The sound of combat pierced through the air. It was chaos incarnate, thundering booms shaking the earth and sending debris flying sometimes meters away. Battles had broken out throughout every corner of the forest, spreading like wildfire. However, this was natural, as 101 participants were scrambling for an easily three positions. They all believed themselves destined to stand at the summit, special and extraordinary among crowds of the mundane. And today was the best chance to showcase just that to their teachers. Senior brother, who do you think will become the class president? Shen Yi asked, eyes glued to the large screen on the wall, analyzing. Tang Wuling, Wu Zhangkong answered. Tang Wuling. Are you sure? Wu Zhangkong nodded. But Gu Yue and several other students are stronger than him. He doesn't shine in any aspect, and we have a lot of good newcomers flooding in this year. Shen Yi said, the inner court standards are extremely strict now. In fact, the outer court is practically used to toughen students without letting them enter the inner court directly. Do you really think Tang Wuling has a chance against those students? Wu Zhangkong shook his head. It's not his strength that will allow him to win, but his character. I know Tang Wuling isn't the most gifted of his classmates, and Gu Yue is obviously stronger than him. In fact, Shishi and Xu Xiaoan are about equal to him as well. Not to mention, there are numerous students with more talent than him. That said, I am certain no one is more suited to be class president. Shen Yi was taken aback. Is it because he's a schemer? Because he's so two-faced? Wu Zhangkong shook his head again. No. It's because he has the temperament of a leader. A leader's temperament. Aren't you exaggerating a bit too much? Shen Yi prodded. Once more, Wu Zhangkong shook his head. I'm not. Watch him carefully from now on. It took me three years to uncover what sort of person he is. He may be rotten at times, but his character truly shines when he's faced with a challenge and still manages to make the right decision. You say he's two faced, but when his comrades are in danger, he doesn't hesitate to step forward to help. Even then, he somehow manages to minimize the damage. Furthermore, his situational awareness is a level above his peers. If he wasn't in charge of his team, then their fighting strength would decrease by 20 or maybe even 30%. But under his lead, they act as one cohesive whole. His charisma unites the people at his side and makes them willingly accept his commands. Both Yue and Shishi are proud kids, but they never forget to call him captain. It's his actions that demand their heartfelt admiration. So, like I said before, just watch. I am convinced that out of everyone out there, he's the most likely to become class president. Shen Yi hummed, eyes blazing over thoughtfully. I'll sit back and observe then, and I'll await an excellent performance from him. Farther out into the distance, a blood-soaked figure dressed in tattered attire leapt out of the bushes. On his back were a pair of white wings, nothing like the holy angel ones Tang Wuling had seen before. Instead of feathers, white hair covered the surface area of the wings. Black stripes knitted like spiderwebs. These same stripes snaked throughout his body. If not for his humanoid form, it would be easy to mistake him for a tiger. This person had a muscular body covered in wounds. Yet he managed to rush forward like a roaring gale. They said clouds come from dragons and wings come from tigers. Tiger-type martial souls were powerful, but he outdone even that by possessing a winged tiger martial soul. As he dashed from the bushes, three figures followed chase, leading with someone shrouded in a black haze. The pack moved in complete silence. Not a single rustle of a leaf would be heard as they shot through the forest. The area around them dimmed as if the light was being sucked into their pitch black haze. The black figures flashed forward, leaving after images behind as they closed the gap between them and their prey. It seemed that the winged tiger wasn't truly capable of flight, especially with a gaping hole in his right wing. Compared to their leader, the two behind the shadowy figure were slower, trailing behind as the one in front overtook the winged tiger soul master. A jet black light exploded. Even 50 meters away, Tang Wuling broke out into a cold sweat at its sheer power. This chill came not from the weather, but from the very depths of his soul. What martial soul is that? Stricken with dread, the winged tiger soul master barrel rolled in the air, activating his purple third soul ring. His body expanded, a golden shine dusting his hair as he spun around roaring to face the attack. As soon as he did, a wave of darkness descended, engulfing both the winged tiger and the shadowy figure pursuing him. A blink, and the winged tiger soul master blasted out of the darkness like a rocket. He smashed into the ground and slid through it. His damaged wings snapped off clean. Then the shadowy figure left the darkness embrace, the black haze covering their body thin enough for Tang Wuling to descend their appearance. Ash and hair. Sickly pale skin, it was a youth whose physical appearance bore nothing attractive to say so the least, and the only features were the second glance were perhaps his hair and eyes. That said, he seemed to have sprang out from another world. In his right hand was a large scythe. The handle was no less than three meters long and its blade stretched to one meter, alluring violet patterns etched into the metal. In fact, those decorations sucked in the soul of the observer. That's the gray-haired youth lifted his scythe as he approached the winged tiger soul master, one leisurely step at a time. Show some mercy, begged the wounded party, but his pleas were left unanswered. A flash of shadow, followed by blinding white light, and the powerful winged tiger soul master was no more. Moments later, the two
Tang Wolin asked. His name is Xu Yucheng. It's an ordinary name, but he's super famous in Bright City. He's from the Imperial Sun Moon Soul Engineer Academy. I hear he is nicknamed Immortal. Immortal Xu Yucheng. His martial soul is the Demon Scythe, also known as the Reaper Scythe. Pay attention to him. The reason he has four rings with not a single purple one is because his body can't handle it. The Demon Scythe isn't a peak level martial soul, but that's not because it isn't powerful. No, it's because it's so powerful it begins devouring the Soul Master's body. Because of that, his body is so frail he doesn't dare fuse with a thousand year spirit soul yet. In fact, having that many hundred year soul rings is impressive for his situation. Yang Niangsha's eyes grew wide. His words becoming more and more grave. He's not just the strongest student under fifteen at the Imperial Sun Moon Soul Engineering Academy. He even dominated everyone eighteen years old and under. Remember that. I never expected him to enter our class. This is going to be troublesome. Also, the two following him should be from the Imperial Sun Moon Soul Engineering Academy. Like Shrek Academy, that Academy has over 10,000 years of history, and I even hear that back then. They stood toe to toe with them. Chapter 310, Continental Rankings. Xu Yicheng truly was a formidable opponent. With four soul rings, he stood at the peak of the first grade. Tang Wolin's team would have to face him sooner or later, but from what they had seen, victory would be no easy feat. He really is too powerful. I'm not sure if we even stand a chance against him. Big Brother Yang, do you think you can withstand his attack? Tang Wolin asked with a worried face. Yang Niangsha thought about it for a moment. I can probably endure for a short while. He replied, I think suppressing him with ranged attacks is the best approach. If we do face him, I'll keep him occupied while Gu Yue showers him with her ice attribute attacks. He has a frail body so he will be more susceptible to elemental attacks. Don't worry, we still have a chance. Wolin, you're a control type soul master, right? Yeah. Tang Wolin nodded. Our team composition is pretty good then. You control, I'll be the vanguard, and Gu Yue can attack from a distance. All right, we got this. Fire blazed in Yang Niangsha's eyes. Tang Wolin relaxed, a trace of admiration flashing through his eyes. I have a suggestion, big brother Yang. I think you should be the captain of our team. Gu Yue and I are from East City, a distant place, so we're not as knowledgeable as you. You're strong and experienced. With you as captain, we'll be able to last even longer in this competition. If we last until the end, you should be class president and we'll be your vice presidents. Yang Niangsha smiled wryly and patted Tang Wolin on the shoulder. Sure, sure. Don't worry, I'll definitely protect you too. Gu Yue lowered her head, hiding the twitching of her mouth from Yang Niangsha as she fought to contain her laughter. Tang Wolin beamed. Big brother Yang, what should we do now? I've almost fully recovered, and my martial soul is still fine. Once I'm ready, we'll go join the fray and pick some fights too. Yang Niangsha answered. The class president is whoever lasts the longest, but if someone wins the position by just hiding the entire time, I don't think our classmates would accept them. The class president isn't just a figurehead after all. They're responsible for leading the class. To that end, strength is paramount. Oh. So it's like that, Tang Wuling said. I thought just being the last person standing would be enough. A slight smile formed on Yang Niangsha's lips. Then he stood up. You have to look at things on a deeper level. Now let's get going. Tang Wuling pulled Gu Yue in front of him so she stood behind Yang Niangsha. She turned around and glared at him, puffing her cheeks out. He simply smiled in response. Yang Niangsha was cautious as they advanced. Their path always zigzagged to take advantage of the shadows the foliage provided, and they silently made their way toward the most chaotic part of the forest. A flash of white light suddenly bathed the area before them. Yang Niangsha raised a hand and Tang Wuling and Gu Yue came to a halt. Another competitor had been eliminated. A group walked out ahead of them. It was a team of seven. Leading the way was a tall youth with a shield in his hands. He had three soul rings, two yellow and one purple. Behind that youth was a handsome boy, the most eye-catching of the seven. He had long blue hair flowing down his back and an air of stability around him. We Wu Zhangkong also had blue hair, but their auras differed like black and white. Wu Zhangkong was the icily arrogant prince charming, whereas this youth wore a lukewarm smile as if he had everything under control. He was slender and had pale skin, blue hair, and blue eyes. Every single one of his movements was as natural as drifting clouds and flowing water, as if he were one with nature. Even watching from afar, Tang Wuling could tell that this person was the core of that team. Two people flanked the blue-haired youth, both of whom looked slender and agile. But behind him was someone that Tang Wuling and Gu Yue were all too familiar with. It was Xu Xiaowan. With her cute face and sweet smile, Xu Xiaowan naturally found her place behind the blue-haired youth, occasionally exchanging a few words with him. Following Tang Wuling's team from a distance, Xu Xi had climbed a tree. When he saw Xu Xiaowan with that team, the corner of his mouth began to twitch. The old saying really is true. Xu Xi mumbled. Well, life really is like a drama, and everything is an act. Yang Niangsha motioned to Tang Wuling and Gu Yue. He quietly squatted into the shrubbery, concealing his presence as much as possible. There were 101 students in the first grade, but surprisingly enough, there was a seven-man team. This was likely the largest team in the competition, considering how organized their ranks were. They definitely worked well together. Yang Niangsha turned to Tang Wuling and whispered, "It's actually a seven-man team. This is a bit troublesome. Three man, five man, and seven man teams all have different tactics, and a team of seven is the optimal number. They are able to advance or retreat however they want without a single member being redundant. We should avoid them for now and let other teams weaken them first. Do you recognize them?" Tang Wuling asked. I know that girl in their team. She's also from the Spicy Alliance. Her name is Xu Xiaoan. She has an ice staff martial soul, and she's ice attribute controller. Her abilities are a bit similar to Gu Yue's, but slightly weaker. I don't recognize any of the others. I only know about the guy in the center. He's really annoying to deal with. Maybe even more than Xu Yicheng. Huh. Tang Wuling stared at Yang Niangsha in astonishment. He's more powerful than that demon side guy. Yang Niangsha shook his head. He isn't more powerful. He can't even hope to compare with Xu Yicheng. However, Yang Niangsha paused for a moment, then said, He's from Heaven Do City. His name is Luo Kixing. He's a control type soul master that has three soul rings, but his spiritual power is his most noteworthy quality. I heard that he's already reached the spirit sea realm. Aside from that, he's a space type soul master. I was in the same entrance exam group as him. I was there to witness him get a total of 93 points in the end, which is supposedly the highest score in the last 50 or so years. Considering his ability, he shouldn't have any problems with entering the inner court. His space abilities are extremely powerful, and he'll be annoying to deal with when he has such a large group of teammates. Space type? Tang Wuling subconsciously glanced at Gu Yue. Elemental type soul masters were rare, and the most common elements wielded were the four base elements water, fire, earth, and wind. As for light, darkness, and space, they were called the three higher elements and were the most powerful. Of the three, space was the most mysterious and deceptive. Developing the space element for control would only result in a powerful combination. Furthermore, all space type soul skills were strong. Luo Gixing also has a nickname, Shakala. Both Shakala Luo Gixing and Immortal Shu Yucheng are top geniuses of our generation and were supposedly already chosen to enter the inner court. The girl that Gu Yue helped me defeat a while back is also quite famous. She's a poison type soul master, and her martial soul is the Jade Phosphorus Snake Emperor, a martial soul that excels at guerrilla warfare. She's quite arrogant, but fairly weak in one-on-one -on -one combat. Her, her name is Zheng Yurin, also known as Jade Snake Zheng Yurin. Have you guys heard of the Continental Rankings? The Continental Rankings? What's that? Tang Wuling blankly shook his head. This was his first time hearing of it. Yang Niangsha stared at him in shock. You really don't know about it. It looks like ECC really is a remote place. The Continental Rankings is a series of rankings specially curated by the